Let's get back to business, boys and girls, and that business is talking about toys that are rather old and thus really only useful if you're looking at eBay value to see whether or not it's actually worth what a scalper wants for it. Yay, toys! So we're going to go with one of my favorites from the Cybertron line to get back into the swing of things. I did promise to talk more about Cybertron. This is Cannonball, one of those figures that often comes up in best repaints of all time lists, and as well as my own if I ever put one together. Originally the deluxe Cybertron Red Alert mold, this is done up in a far different color scheme with super dark gray plastic and lots of silver trimming all around the entire vehicle. Looks absolutely awesome. Also, translucent purple windshields, which is a neat little uh, visual effect. It's very striking and very haunting, which is pretty much appropriate given the designs on him. This is where everyone really liked Cannonball, was these teal skeletons just kind of flailing around on the sides of the vehicle. It's a very unique design, very different from what you'd see on a Transformer. Even today, I think only the BotCon Cannonball has replicated anything that looked even remotely like this. He also has his own little sigil here on the top in the same teal. Yep, so Cannonball is a pirate, so I guess this would be his uh, pirate emblem. I'm going to assume the Cybertronian version of uh, the skull and crossbones. It looks like a predator skull, uh, or like one of the dreads from the movie. You know, I'm just spitballing here. I don't know the actual uh, homage or if there's any an intentional uh, design reusage. So aside from all of this silver that's trimming all the way around and a little bit there on the windshield, a little bit of a gradient effect there, you got yellow for the headlights and the turn signals, so that's painted in. On the rear, well, not a whole lot to speak of. The molding is there, the paint is not, which is a shame, but nothing too bad. The big thing about this is this was originally like a first responder vehicle. So, of course, there is a, a light bar up top as well as emergency lights, which are completely uh, painted over here. You know, no, uh, no idea what they are now. They're just little gray nubs, I guess. And then you, of course, have these purple pieces, which are leftovers, because they, of course, are on the same sprues as all the other translucents in here. And yes, uh, you can also see the kind of flaw to this toy. The head is extremely, extremely visible. He's kind of doing the uh, Energon Ironhide thing here, where it's just kind of hidden, <laughs> almost hidden. It's a little bit more obvious here than I think it was on Red Alert, just because it's this gold lump right in the middle of everything, but... Uh, it is what it is. You know, it's it's probably the one detraction in what is otherwise a really cool vehicle mode, which manages to do something that's very difficult, make an ambulance-style Transformer look nothing like its original incarnation. That, I think, is uh, a fairly competent job. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you the Cyber Key gimmick here. It came with your standard Earth Key, chrome in the center, silver around the edges. I still love the design of these things. And there's the number on the back if the Cybertron website still worked. It does not. But if I plug it into the rear, you get these flip-out guns that pop out from the side doors. Mm. As opposed to all the other, the top doors. What am I talking about? So yeah, it's a very simple gimmick. Um, they don't really... Uh, they don't really have the size or mass of like the big missile launchers others have and things like that. They're very small guns, but what I like is the speed of the reveal. With the doors jutting out to the side and those flipping out into position. This one does not quite go into position quite so well, but it might just be mine. Don't know. But it is a neat little trick, and I do like that it works in both modes. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, flip these back in for transformation. It's a little bit tricky. You have to be able to push them in and then push the doors back in at the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and start transforming this guy. I'm going to start by loosening up the rear and then taking the front down. Now, at this point, I'll tell you this is an extremely p clever part of the transformation as the front and the rear are going to combine to make the legs. I'm also going to point out, um, on the original version, the Galaxy Force version of Red Alert. Uh, these wheel wells here, these wells that contain the feet, were extremely deep and very, uh, very difficult to uh, get the feet out of. Let's see, I believe it's the front that actually had it. Yeah, it's the front where it was really difficult. Now, on the American version, 
you had uh, these little raised nubs that kept the feet from going down too far. But they originally molded them out too far and it made the legs uh, fail to come together at the knee, which completely removed the knee articulation on the toy. Cannonball is the second attempt to rectify the problem with the original figure, and this time they got it right. It's a nice middle point where the legs come together completely and fully work, and the feet are not impossible to remove. So good on you, Hasbro. It took a couple times, but you got there. That's the important part. Pluck that out. These come up on a doubled hinge. Now you'll notice, yes, you're starting to see a lot of gold plastic on this guy, um, but this toy is uh, coming up on 10 years of age, and you'll note nothing's really breaking on it. Actually doing quite well. You see double hinges in gold plastic and translucent plastic, and nothing's breaking. Wow, it's uh, almost as if the toy is very well made. Raise the head up, you kind of have to pry it out. Hope you got some fingernails for that. Backpack latched into place. Like legs, like so. And like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a cannonball in his robot mode. I absolutely love the color scheme on this toy. The dark gray and the gold set off together so well. And it does exactly what it needs to do. It looks so different from Red Alert. You know, it's done an extremely, extremely extensive job recasting the mold without any new head necessary. That's really, really cool. I'm going to give you a close-up look at the head, and you'll see one of the tricks they did, which is painting on what's supposed to be the eye patch. Though, if you notice, it goes all the way down to the side of his face, his cheek, and down to the chin. So it's more of like a half-mask thing going on, but it's meant to give that eye patch style to make him look a little bit closer to a pirate and for that it works well enough i am a fan of this design and it does help distinguish him from red alert even though i kind of wish uh I, I wish the visor part of him had also been painted in that just to continue the coloring and give you that blind in one eye appearance that you, you kind of expect from an eye patch i don't expect the visor to be completely intact still uh, Form-wise, you can notice he is very, very chunky in some parts because of the way he transforms. His legs are extremely beefy below the knees. He looks like he's wearing these massive waiter boots like a Mega Man boss or something. And a uh, very, very, uh, very squat figure, too. He's not nearly as tall as some of the other Cybertron figures. Makes up for it in just, like, sheer mass and density. This is a solid, hefty toy all the way around. You can see a lot of faux detailing here in the front to kind of match how he looked in vehicle mode. A lot of silver and that same headlight color in mostly the same shape. Decepticon sigil in the center and a little bit more of the silver to the gold. And it looks so, so nice. A little bit more on the shoulders and that's about it for new paint. What's really shocking here is just how much of that gold came out. For how little was visible in the vehicle mode, it really does do a great job of taking up the primary colors position from the gray, just because it pops so strong against the gray. It's a really, really nice visual trick. It also comes out fairly clean. He does have a backpack where all of his gimmick is stored, but this means the gimmick doesn't really hinder him in this mode in any way, which is pretty much the objective you have when you've got some big flippy gimmick like that. For articulation, head has a full rotation. Ball joints in the shoulders. Now the doors are going to get in the way because of that backpack. Luckily they've got so many hinges on them you can do pretty much whatever. If you want to do something like that and put up full shields you can do that. Or you can fold them back a little bit, whichever. Elbows go to the 90. Uh, nothing really in the wrists unless you want to tilt them upward a little bit. Nothing in the waist because of how he transforms. He's got this really weird articulation set because of the way his legs transform. But it still gives you a full range. You see an outward hinge up here, which gives you the outward motion. And then he has full, full uh, front and back rotation uh, to create something of a universal movement. It's a little bit awkward, especially from some angles. Especially if you notice how split his crotch gets. But beyond that, 
I think it's incredible that he has the transformation he has and he still has full range of motion in his legs. That's really impressive engineering. Full 90 degree knee as well. Uh, there's two hinges here for the front and back. So you can adjust uh, the feet as necessary for some of your more intricate poses to get some more stability. But for the most part, that's what he got for articulation. And it works out fairly well. He's got some good posability in him, though some poses will come out looking awkward because of the strange way the hips had to be engineered and uh, the, uh, the restrictions up in the shoulders because of his kibble. But beyond that, he's not too bad. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with this level. Now, there's a few more tricks that he's got to him, just like Red Alert, and just like all Red Alerts from the Armada trilogy, it seems. He does have storage compartments, which is going to hide away a few extra attachments. You can plug on a hammer for his gun hand, which gives him a little bit more of a... I guess, I guess it's supposed to be a tool for Red Alert. Here, it just looks like a bludgeoning weapon, which, hey, again, it's good recasting. And then if you want something a little bit more akin to a pirate's hook, you do have the grabber arm that was on Red Alert. I think this is kind of the inspiration for making him into a pirate, that missing hand and wanting that. Well, we don't have a hook, but we got a little claw. We got a little claw and we can we can like pretend that that's uh, closer to a hook as well. So you do have uh, a little bit of you, you do have the like the beginnings of how that came about and I can't get him I can't get his back in all right there we go so beyond that let's go and see the uh, gimmick one more time just to confirm yes it works in both modes it works best if you have the shoulders flush and downward like that key into the slot and you gotta I, yeah this is the tricky part because I want to make sure like my hands and fingers are completely clear of where the guns are going to flip up there we go it's not as visually inspiring as it is in vehicle mode. But again, it's a very quick reaction. Those guns pop up into place very, very fast. And it is, uh, it is a gimmick that does not get in the way of what makes him a fairly, fairly well-executed toy. So that, my friends, is Cybertron Cannonball. An extraordinarily good repaint, creating a very unique character in Transformers. I don't think there was a proper pirate character before this guy outside of a few in Japan. I think uh, I think the Seacons counted in Japan. Mm. And if you... I, I, no, no, if I, I'm remembering a few now from Beast Wars, Neo. Never mind. <laughs> Beast Wars and Beast... Okay, I, I, there's a few. There's a few. But for the most part, this was our, uh, this was our first intro introduction to a proper pirate here in uh, the domestic shores. And it works out pretty well. It's a great recast. It's a really good toy overall with some really, really cool and unique engineering. A little bit limited in some parts, but I think what he does great uh, makes up for everything that he does not so great. So, that's it. Hopefully, uh, no more delays from here on out. Let's get back to business.